Okay, hello. Um, finally time for another Overmind release. Um, it's been a bit rough with all the Corona stuff going on. Uh, I wasn't able to, like I'm a family man. Uh, we have a daughter who's three and a half years old, which means she had to stay at home and we had to work from home. Uh, I just wasn't able to put in the hours I was supposed to. Uh, so a huge thanks to Code Sandbox for supporting me through that time because I didn't have to worry about finances. I just tried to put in as many hours as I could. Uh, but that meant that I had to uh, down prioritize open source. Uh, but now that things are getting back to normal, um, I'm getting my feet back on the ground and there's tons of stuff to do here, but I thought I would do several minor releases and try to focus on, on what is the most press, uh, pressing issues. Um, also, um, I don't know if you've seen uh, any of my other videos, but uh, we moved to a new apartment as well, uh, which also took quite a bit of time. But now things are finally getting back to well, somewhat normal. Um, so what I thought I'd do in this video is to just go through the release and talk about it. So uh, one of the things that's happening now is that we're getting a new TypeScript version and testing out the beta, there's an issue with the derived type. And I'm not quite sure what's happening there. It's like a circle, a circular thing. And I haven't dived deep into it, but since we already have a new way to express derived, uh, which works with, um, uh, with the new TypeScript version, I'm just going to highlight that way of doing it. Uh, so if we go to TypeScript here and we go to derived, we can see that previously we had like a derived type, which you would express in your state typing, but now you don't do that anymore. Oh, there's a typo here. Uh, you don't do that anymore. You just define your state types as normal as just plain values. And then when you uh, actually define the derive, the value, you use this new derived function. So you call that function. Again, you give it uh, the typing that you're used to with the derived type. So like the parent state and the expected return value. And then you uh, just derive it. If you would need, um, uh, yeah, maybe I can point this out as well. If you were to have it derived on a nested state, you would then just point to the nested as the parent because you have to point to the parent object, right? Uh, if you were to um, use explicit typing and you want to point to the root state, you would have a third type argument here. And that third type argument is the config um, type. When you just import from, um, from um, Overmind, like all the typing from Overmind, you don't need that. That's uh, implicit. But with explicit typing, you have to pass a third argument there. Uh, but this is uh, kind of nice because now your uh, state typing is just plain values. And that's also how you actually consume it. It's rather this function that allows you to express how that value is created. Anyways, let's move on. Um, now you can pass a custom socket to Overmind GraphQL. Uh, let's have a look at that custom subscription socket. So typically when you uh, initialize your GraphQL, you can give it two uh, options, one for uh, like plain queries, HTTP, and then um, like a web socket thing. And you can normally pass an object here with an endpoint and we um, use a default implementation, but uh, you can also now uh, create your own socket. So this should uh, fix issues where, for example, our um, default implementation always points to like slash, uh, was it slash socket or something? Um, but anyways, please try this out. Uh, uh, and also related to if you already have like a socket, you want to reuse a WebSocket connection to do GraphQL subscriptions, you can do that. You can pass in that socket. Um, and then we have new hooks for Overmind React. So typically what you would do is you would create this use overmind hook and that hook would do everything. It will give you the state actions, the effects and the reaction. But now you can create specific uh, state hooks, actions hooks, 
uh, hook and an effects hook and a reaction hook. And what this allows you to do is, is express things a little bit differently. Um, but first of all, the state hook is what actually does all the tracking logic. Well, if you were to use the use actions or the effects hook, that wouldn't initiate any tracking, um, which is really nice. Uh, in case your component doesn't need state, it just needs actions, for example. What's also nice about this, it, it lets you naturally point to a namespace because typically a component relates to a namespace and then you can just add the namespace at the end and then you can destructure that way. It reduces the amount of destructuring, which is also nice. Um, so I recommend changing to that. It should clean up uh, a little bit of the code and be a little bit more performant. Like it's not a big thing, but it's, you know, deta details. Uh, what we've uh, also done is improve the hot reloading logic. Um, so uh, the way this worked previously is that it's kind of difficult with the hot reloading because you have a session and you're coding and then you have the initial configuration of your Overmind app and then you might uh, do something in the UI which changes that state. But then you go into the code and then you change that state which means that now you have a new configuration object which needs to fit in with the changed original configuration object. And we have to figure out what has changed and what has not changed and we need to update your app and all that stuff. The way we do that now is actually rehydrate uh, the state. So we take the previous configuration object, we find a new uh, configuration object and we produce mutations uh based on that and these mutations are then passed into re the rehydration of overmind and then it will produce exact mutations required and update the exact components um that relates to those mutations because uh, previously we would just update everything which is not ideal um what we also do is that we keep track of all the mutations that are performed during the session so when a hot reloading occurs, it first figures out what are the actual changes in the, in the new configuration. It applies those mutations, but then it runs through all the mutations that were performed during the session. So it kind of builds you back into the, uh, the correct state, which is super, super awesome. Also fixed so that uh, actions are not actually replaced uh they are kind of like when you have the actions they uh, kind of like point to the configuration action underneath it's kind of wrapped so when we hot reload we change the underlying action uh, that means that um, when you like reference an action um, for example related to an event or something you can still change it and hot reload because uh, it changes the underlying action, uh, not the reference. Cool. Uh, what's also been fixed is that the typing of Overmind GraphQL, the query typing should be okay now. Overmind Angular should now work with Angular 9. Um, I actually had to, like, it's kind of like there's so many changes to Angular. It's a bit frustrating as a, a library maintainer. Also, they have their completely isolated eco um, or like a ecosystem and bundling and everything. Um, and it doesn't fit well with anything else. So I had to move over my Angular to its own repo and kind of like build it the way Angular wants you to build it. But anyways, uh, this makes it more maintainable and uh, I should be more up to speed with for, uh, future changes. Uh, yes, uh, the dev tools now, when you hold control or command in the state overview, you can like edit some state, um, and change it, uh, that didn't work for nested state, but that's fixed now. Uh, and there were also like uh, minor issues with serializing classes and stuff. Um, yes. Uh, so that's it. Uh, looking at my to do list, there's like tons of stuff I want to do in Overmind. Um, this is stuff I'm working on for release. Um, and then I also have a bunch of support issues um, that I want to get into. I think maybe some of these are fixed now. 
but yeah, as you can see, there's tons of stuff that still needs to be done. But at least now there's some progression. And as I said, there will be minor releases just pushing so that we can get to the end of this. Um, so if you want to help help out, uh, just contact me. Um, what, I, what is most helpful is just testing uh, the fixes so that uh, uh, I can feel confident that we can do a release. But also if you want to dive into the code and, and change something, um, please contact me and uh, I'll give you some pointers to, to what you can do. Great, thanks and have a great week, uh, week weekend. Okay, bye.